next at Loxton Ag Tech Field Days. Matthew, uh, Deep Planet, that's what we're here having a look at now. Take us through what it is. Yeah, Deep Planet is a uh, agri-tech company out of the UK with their research background out of Oxford University, um, where three founders uh, met, met each other as uh, doing their MBA and, and uh, did a water challenge independently uh, to each other and realised if they put all their smarts together, they've actually got um, some really useful technology. So what they're doing is uh, monitoring and helping uh, growers and winemakers to manage uh, vineyards at scale. So it's largely bringing in satellite imagery. So other people have spoken about different ways of getting imagery. We're looking at satellite imagery and providing it on a regular weekly or daily basis so that they can make decisions uh, quite quickly and not have to rely on imagery on set time frames. Um, Importantly, they're therefore able to look at all the, the things we've already spoken about in terms of uh, vigour variability, um, stress, water, uh, but they've also got some really smart algorithms in terms of doing hands-off yield prediction, uh, as well as, as you can see on screen here, BOME heat maps. They've actually identified how they can actually measure sugar from space and organise um, what the you know where you might want to take your sampling from to actually get a truly accurate representation of the, the vineyard, um, help growers have that database decision, uh, sorry, database discussion with grower liaisons about is their, is their block ready to be picked? Can they actually split pick the box because a third of it actually is within contract and two thirds might not be. So you can say, well, let's take that third off and we'll come back in a week and pick the rest of it. So it's reducing the growers risk, um, but the winery is still getting their wines, uh, sorry, get, still getting their grapes at the quality they want for the wines that they want to produce. Okay. Um, something we've talked about is interoperability and working between other systems as well. Does this interface with other systems or can it? Is there a way it can do yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So when, when Deep Planet originally set up their business, their whole uh, philosophy was that they were going to be just a business that delivered the, the algorithms that could do the analysis of the data. You know, you, as you can see, you can get imagery from lots of different sources where their smarts is, is actually in interpreting that data and being able to put it out. So their initial, initial plan was that they would API in and out of uh, different systems. So if you've got soil moisture sensors, they can actually take that information in, they can predict out your soil moisture for up to a month. Most growers want a week to two weeks. They can also do soil moisture interpretation so your whole uh, sub um, terrain can be mapped across the whole block rather than just getting a, a uh, rather than just getting a measurement at one particular point. Um, but unfortunately, when they started to push out their results, there was no dominant platform, as we've been talking about today. Um, so they can either deliver it through a front-end platform, they can API it into, say, a major larger winery or grower group's existing operational platform, um, or as some growers who maybe want to use technology but they're not very technologically focused and they don't want to jump on a computer every day, um, the way they build their software is they actually build it as if it's like a PDF report and then once growers and through the co-creation, once growers are happy with that, then they build it onto the platform. So they can literally just email you a PDF report once a week to make it really easy. So I'm suggesting that would be the entry level if you were going to use a system like this? Yeah, I mean from an entry level, so they have um, as most software as a service, you know, monthly subscription companies do, they have a free service um, where you can get your basic imagery. Again, you know, we're not out there trying to, um, you know, create a, uh, you know, make money off of supplying imagery because that that's quite easy to get. Uh, where where you pay the the fee for the service is actually in the interpretation of the data, and moving into prediction analytics. So if you take, for example, um, the BOME heat maps and so forth, that actually was a spin out from us actually predicting. Uh, the optimal harvest date based on a target BOME level. So Pano Ricard winemakers said to us last season, we want to know um, how much is out there, quantum of the yield. That's what we originally started discussing. And then they said the second question was, we need to know when it's ready to be picked. Because if we've got a 13 and a half BOME, uh, that's our target BOME for that Shiraz block, um, then um, if it comes in a, a BOME under, it costs us a whole heap of money to put concentrate in or whatever else, and we have to stop. We might have already booked trucks, so we have to pay for those trucks going back empty. Um, and they came back and we did a thousand hectares over multiple regions. This region uh, in, in the Riverland, Clare Valley, Langhorn Creek and Barossa, um, multiple regions, we got to an 89% accuracy on their, um, on their yield prediction at a block level and then within 0.22 of a BOME to actually measure their sugar. So 0.3 was their 
their maximum range we're in 0.22 this is one of their blocks where they've um, ground truthed it for us as well they were very helpful in that um, and you know they they estimated that it was up to $55 a tonne just largely in logistics costs that they were getting as an ROI in terms of not having futile transport reducing their sampling by not having to have as many sample samples going out the hand the the yield prediction is completely hands-off the maturity prediction needs some initial samples at the early start of the season just to calibrate it um, and they're saving quite a lot of money and it also brought the winemakers into a database decision on where that variability is can we split pick the box because I've got X amount as I said before that's in contract um, and not have to risk losing my whole block yeah, right. Uh, interesting, and uh, the connectivity involved in that as well. Matthew, so can thank I just, you. I'll also just quietly say um, they have received a grant from the South Australian Government through the Department of, um, for Trade and Investment called the Landing Pad Program, uh, and they will actually be opening up an office here in South Australia um, because they recognise the, the smarts and skills of South Australia as a community from the ecosystem that people like Ollie are, are doing, the Australian Institute of Machine Learning and the universities and so forth, and with their Oxford University background, they, they are coming, so they will be based here as well.